Winter Car Testing and Spotting Prototypes in the Arctic Circle Argeplog, Sweden plays host to the world's car manufacturers every winter, we find out why they all flock to Kalmus Proving Ground. More gas, more gas it's virtually impossible to spin, are the confident instructions from our CO driver as we career sideways in a Ford Focus R's, worryingly close to the thick snow banks around us. And while our gut reaction is to slam on the brakes and panic, we keep the faith with our experienced engineer in the passenger seat, kicking the throttle and tweaking the wheel. The hot hatch bites and stabilizes, while the impressive slide continues in a cloud of pure white snow that covers our rear window. It's a remarkable and addictive feeling made possible by hours of research, testing, and tuning by experts on the banks of this bitterly cold, frozen lake. The drift mode system on the Focus R's that's made us look like we're ready to take on and win the World Rally Championship is just one of many magic tricks developed by manufacturers in this unforgiving icy environment. This motoring mecca is Argeplog, an icy outpost around 60 miles south of the Arctic Circle in Sweden. It hosts the Wintertest program, where the entire car industry descends on this normally sleepy town to use the lake frozen to around half a meter as a test bed from January to March. Everyone from Fiat to Land Rover has models at the Kalmus Proving Ground, and they're being put through extensive testing programs in temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees. It's a cold, remote, and labor-intensive job, but the work that's done each year at Wintertus directly impacts on the cars that we buy and drive. Auto Express wanted to see just what a day in these sub-zero temperatures is like, so we joined engineering firm GKN Driveline for the trip north. This global company has 25 years of experience, but will be a mystery to most motorists, yet its work is found on current models such as the Range Rover Evoque, BMW i8, Volvo XC90 and the Focus R's we're driving. The basis of GKN's growing reputation it has four tech centers around the world in Germany, the US, Japan and China is its unique and one-of-a-kind twin-stir system. It's part of a conventional all-wheel drive setup and helps control power to the rear wheels to improve stability and traction with thousands of calculations made every 300 milliseconds. It's dubbed Active Driveline when you spec it on an Evoque, but is the same setup although tuned differently that allows drivers to experience sideways action in the Focus R's with consummate ease and confidence. This year, GKN is going a step further with its Wintertest program, including a prototype Volvo XC90 fitted with a brand new Edwinster system that makes the rear wheels electrically powered and independent of the rest of the car, allowing it to drive in full electric mode and hybridizing the car for emissions benefits. The removal of the prop shaft frees up a huge gap for the battery pack, too. A project is also underway with the new Vauxhall Insignia plus other vehicles due on sale within two to three years. It's all revolutionary technology, and just highlights how times have changed at Wintertest over recent years. Since 2010, GKN has more than doubled its test program at Argeplog, and that's common across the industry as manufacturers continue to see the benefits of the landscape when developing vehicle software. As an example, the first models to feature the twin stir system such as the 2014 Evoque required 250,000 lines of computer coding by GKN. Future models will require 2.5 million, which when printed out line by line measures 3.2 meters. It's part of the industry's move to AutoSAR, a global standard that's being introduced for software across all car makers. Think of it as the automotive industry's Microsoft. Michael Ricks, Director of Global Engineering Capabilities at GKN, and in charge of the Argeplog operation, explained, the way we work has to change totally, it's a different world from what we had 20 years ago. We've gone from mechanic to mechatronic to all-wheel drive electric. It's a very big journey for everyone. In the automotive industry. These advancements have carried over to the testing facilities, too, since the early wintertists of the late 60s. Original testers used gas burners to melt ice and sandpaper to scratch it before letting it refreeze to simulate different frictions. Now, there's heated surfaces and perfectly prepared ice. 
The actual tests carried out at Winterdist remain largely the same. There's split surface straight line braking with hot tarmac and polished ice, plus a similar layout on a steep hill that's run in forward and reverse. The Calmus Proving Ground actually runs to around 10,000 square meters of manufacturer offices and more than 1,200 miles of track. And while our time was spent learning about GKN's technology and blasting around the lake sideways, the actual testing by engineers is long and repetitive, tweaking settings on laptops to gather data before fine-tuning it to present it to the manufacturer for sign-off. In total, the cycle from concept to production is around two years, which includes hot weather testing and normally two stints at Argeplog. Much of GKN's work is helping to solve a problem or brief provided by an OEM, but other parts will be developing fresh ideas it thinks the industry needs, or benchmarking against rivals. The question remains, though why ice? Rick said, Winterdust drives your development process you. No you have to have your car ready in December. It's a regular milestone in your process which helps to give you the pace in the whole year planning. All-wheel drive systems must function in all circumstances, and we have conditions here which provide consistent friction surface. Testing in these temperatures gives us conditions around the world, although even sometimes it is not cold enough and we use cabins to make sure we have covered the temperature range needed by the customer. There's also a huge amount of space available in these remote areas, with the frozen lake an ideal open space, especially if you lose control of a vehicle the worst that happens is a bumpy ride through a soft snowbank. Ricks explained the safety aspect goes beyond that, too. Everything happens in slow motion, so it's much safer, explained Ricks. All the things we do are accelerating and wheel spinning, but they are happening at low speeds. It's vehicle dynamic behavior in slow motion. In a week here we achieve way more than in two or three weeks at other test tracks, so it's very efficient. Our visit in 2017 has come at a key point, then, in the changing face of automotive technology, but how will Winterdust and Argeplog look in the next decade as autonomous tech continues to snowball? By 2025, GKN estimates the car market will be split into thirds between traditional combustion engines, hybrids, and battery EVs, meaning there's a huge need to understand battery management, electric motors, and inverters on top of the engineering expertise within the company already. In the last five years we have doubled the number of cars and demonstrators, said Ricks. It's easy to imagine in the next five years we will have some tech for all-wheel drive and hybrids and we will also have full battery electric vehicles. Winterdust is here to stay. That's good news for the Argeplog economy, which is boosted by around 150M euros at its peak thanks to around 3,000 engineers flooding hotels but also great news for drivers. Beyond all the snow-covered laptops, computer coding and algorithms, Winterdust is helping create world-beating cars. As Ricks puts it, we make the cars fun to drive here. Winterdust by numbers. Top figures and stats about the Calmus Proving Ground. 1985, Calmus Proving Ground. 10,000, square meters of workshops and offices. 19, tracks on land. 24, tracks on the frozen lake. 660 hectares covered 2000 population of argeplog minus 16 lowest mean temperature recorded in january 2016 spend a day at the calmus proving ground and you're exposed to the very latest prototypes many covered in camouflage as they head for the geneva motor show and beyond on our first day we spotted disguised ferraris fords Alfa Romeos, Autos and Land Rovers. In short, nearly every car and component manufacturer is here with the latest models under development and nobody bats an eyelid. However, this makes it an ideal hunting ground for spy photographers to snap next generation cars. And you don't need to sneak into the proving ground to take pictures, either. If you can brave the cold, sitting outside the entrance will provide plenty of shots. Or, if you're feeling lazy, 
waiting in the sleepy town center of Archplog will reveal the automotive industry's secrets when the engineers park up their prototypes up for lunch. If you're particularly daring, heading onto the ice isn't unheard of. After all, Winterdust is on a lake, and just because it's frozen, it doesn't mean it isn't public only the access points are private land. Manufacturers often put up snow banks to hide what they're up to as a result.